So today we're going to look at the photoelectric effect and photoelectron spectroscopy. Both of them are closely related and um, photoelectron spectroscopy is now going to be on the AP test. So first the photoelectric effect. In the photoelectric effect, the electrons or the energies are coming in from the left side. In this case, it's shown as blue light. And the photons hit some kind of a plate, probably metal, that kicks out the electrons. The electrons are then wandering around, but they get attracted to a collector plate because a positive charge is on that. And as the electrons hit the positive plate, then the current is recorded in the ammeter. The electrons which are knocked out are usually the outermost electrons. The Einstein explained the photoelectric effect, and it shows how the outer electron is removed. If I have any extra electron, any extra energy, after I've knocked out the electron, that energy goes into kinetic energy of the electron. So if there's a big photon, it knocks it out, and then the, ener the electron has lots of energy. So this is a typical photoelectric uh, effect graph showing the frequency on the bottom that's needed of the photon to knock out the electron, and then any extra energy that you get that goes into the kinetic energy. So the photoelectron spectroscopy is very similar. You can send in x-rays or ultraviolet rays, some other kind of energy. But the photoelectrons, these electrons, or the photo um, photons knock out not only the outer electrons, but they can knock out all the electrons one by one. So the amount of energy, of course, needed to reach the core electrons is a lot more than the amount of energy needed to reach the outer electrons. So by graphing the amount of energy that we need, we can see how many electrons are core electrons, how many electrons are in the midpoint between the outer the valence and the core electrons, and then how many electrons are in the valence electrons. So if we're clever and we look at the energy which is needed, we can actually write an electron configuration based on the amount of energy that's needed to knock out all the electrons. A photoelectron graph sort of looks like this. Uh, it shows the peaks that you see, and the peaks are related to the amount of energy that's needed, or the binding energy that the electron has, as you can see at the top part. So the, uh, the setup that we have for photoelectron spectroscopy sort of looks like the setup that you have for uh, photoelectric effect. You have a beam of rays, in this case they're shown as red, and the focused beam is x-rays in this case, hits some kind of a sample, usually it's a solid, kicks out the electrons, and the electrons are then collected by some kind of a camera system, which then analyzes the energy and gives you a graph. So the data that we have is a graph, that's just shown in that little monitor at the bottom. And this is showing the two p electrons that you have from silicon. As you know, silicon has electrons in the first energy level, and the second energy level, 2s and 2p. The uh, energy levels for most of this are known as shells. So they would talk about the first shell being the first energy level, the second shell being the second energy level. Um, shells or energy levels um, are synonymous in this case. Um, in, this is an introduction to photoelectron spectroscopy. The two uh, YouTube videos that are following this introduction are very, very good. Some are a little repetitive but very good, and then there is a worksheet that will see whether or not you've managed to master the concept of photoelectron spectroscopy. Good luck.